Hello Chinese viewers, I am DS, a psychologist, and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. So, Chinese New Year is around the corner, and this is a time where a lot of people may be experiencing the harassment of their busybody relatives. So they may be asking you questions like, why don't have girlfriend yet? Why don't have boyfriend yet? Why married already still don't have children? Well, I have analyzed my relatives. I find that most of the relatives who do such a thing are TI users. And because I am a TE dominant, I combat TI users with TI logic. And TI logic is no logic at all. So for example, a relative might ask you, why are you not married yet? Then you just say, because I want to spend more time with you. So what we are going to do in this episode is to imagine, anyway the ENTJ we like to imagine, imagine different strategies for you to counter these busybodies. Well, in the past, to just avoid these busybody relatives, you can go abroad and just avoid them. Now, it's very difficult for you to go abroad, right? So you still have to face them. From the ENTJ's point of view, the easiest strategy to counter these busybodies would be to disengage. What do I mean by this? So, if you keep talking to them, right, I don't want to do this, they will come up with their own logic why you should do this. Like, oh, nobody wants me. Ayah, is it you too choosy? You know, the kind of thing, it goes on and on and on, there's no end. So, disengaging is the best strategy. So, how do you disengage? Give one word replies. So, there is no exchange of communication. Is it because you're too choosy? Maybe, I don't know. What do you mean by you don't know? If it goes on like this, they will stop. Because there is no communication going on. You are just totally blocking them off. And you can do it very politely. Of course, avoiding and disengaging are only two strategies. In this episode, we're going to share some more fun strategies. I think most of the strategies would be unusable by most people, especially the feeling type. So a third strategy that I'm going to introduce here is something that is really a short-term measure. It's called distraction. Boy, how come you're so old and you still don't have girlfriend? When are you going to have a girlfriend? What is it, huh? Why you look at me like that? <laughs> no lah, actually I just saw some eye wax in your eye. Hey, no need to remove it. It actually looks good on you. The next strategy is humiliation. So in this strategy, you humiliate the other party without humiliating them directly. Hey, why are you all married already still don't have children? How long already? Well, Geraldine and I have really been considering having children, but we look at other parents, they just cannot manage their children. So naughty, so misbehaving, and some so stupid also. I mean the children. So Geraldine and I have been thinking about it, can't. We are not good enough to be parents yet. Unlike you. So remember, when using humiliation, the most powerful way of using it is not to mention the other person's children. But just say something generic that describes them. Like for example, naughty, misbehaving, children who throw tantrums, children who are stupid. <laughs> They will know it immediately, they will process it in their brain. That is the most powerful. And when they say, you're talking about my children, huh? You say, no, never. You see? Good, right? The fifth strategy is victimize. Victimize yourself. This is very powerful. So how does victimization work? Make yourself a victim. Because when they are asking you this kind of questions in a series, they are actually bullying you. Make them understand that they are the bully. Victimize yourself to a greater extent and make yourself a visible victim. Because they don't know that you are a victim. How do you do that? I'm so glad you talked to me first. Instead of to Geraldine. Come. You bring her to a corner and then you speak to her in private. You know, Geraldine and I have been trying very hard to have a baby. But we just can't. 
she thinks it's her fault, but of course it's our fault. Now don't you look for her, she's already depressed. If we end up in a divorce, it's your fault, understand? So of course, being TI users, the TI user is very unlikely to think from your point of view. So this is also a short term measure, because they only want to do what they want to do. Very soon, if you get irritated enough, you may want to just cut them off. But before we come to burning bridges as the last strategy, I have another strategy called turning tables. To turn in tables. So what is turning tables? The person... <laughs> so what is turning tables? The auntie is asking you a lot of questions, right? So now you reverse and keep asking her a lot of questions. This is called turning tables. Just to give you another example out of context. So for example, when a person starts to probe into your life too much, then you reverse and ask them very personal questions. Like, hey, how much do you earn from doing this? Huh? What's your salary? Do you think you are earning too much? Wow, really? Oh, you can sleep at night. Huh? <laughs> So how do you turn tables during Chinese New Year? Hey auntie, why are you always asking me the same question? Why I'm not having babies? From a psychological point of view, I think it's because you yourself not having enough sex, right? Is it because uncle don't want to give you? Or because you don't want? Or both of you don't want? Ah, not nice already, is it? Hey, say la, hey, I'm your nephew la, don't be shy. Anyway, for the record, the ENTJ can be really very dirty-minded because of NI. <laughs> a lot of things very suggestive, right? Immediately linked to sex. <laughs> okay, now we come to the last strategy that's called burning bridges. And the ENTJ is really capable of burning bridges. This is where you totally cut off that TI relative away from your life. So from an ENTJ point of view, the TI is my nemesis. I really dislike people who have a lot of TI logic and personally, I do not want them in my life. But of course, given that they are relatives, it's very hard to cut them off. But in my experience, I have done so. So after my dad has passed away, there is no reason for me to relate to his sisters. So I cut them off. So during the Chinese New Year period now, I do not have any visits from my father's side relatives because my father is already gone. Uh, nothing to be happy about la. <laughs> I'm just saying it, okay? Oops! So now, here is one way where you totally cut off ties using the burning bridges method. Actually, auntie, I don't understand why you keep asking me to have babies. Do you know that if I have babies, then there will be more people competing with your children for grandfather's inheritance? Not logical, right? Yeah! Yes, I really think you are such a person. Selfish, stingy, money-minded. Oops. Bye-bye. <laughs> anyway, because I'm on video and this video is going to be public, I think this burning bridges example that I have given is already a very mild one. An ENTJ can burn bridges like hell. Saying nasty things that you can't imagine coming out from an angel's mouth. Because most of the time I can be very angelic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope that this video is entertaining for the viewers. It also serves as a platform for me to showcase my imagination to the viewers. And the imagination is NI imagination, okay? Of course, for the Chinese, do enjoy the process of preparing for Chinese New Year, even though it's going to be a very different Chinese New Year. If you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more fun stuff and ENTJ MBTI and psychology. Okay, I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you in my next episode. <laughs> next episode. Goodbye.